Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at o'clock again. And I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. You ever have it when you're, you, know, you lose your cursor? I lost my cursor. <laughs> you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, where we're doing an ongoing series, which everybody in the land knows, and I'm sure you're aware of it, of what would happen if Patrick Kane went to every team in the NHL. Not all at the same time, but individually. So we're going through every team in the NHL and the possibility that Patrick Kane would go there. Now, why? Why would we do a series like this, you ask? Well, Chicago Blackhawks can't went and told everybody, came out and told everybody in the land that they're in a rebuild. Now, apparently, they also said they have no plans on losing their, uh, or trading their core, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. There's no reason to tell people you're going to be in a rebuild if you're not removing your core, especially after trading Corey Crawford, who is part of your core. Right. So, and from what I understand that the players have said that, you know, they have no intention of asking for a trade and all of that, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll tell you what. You play a season without a goaltender or two, and uh, that can change someone's mind pretty darn quick because I played hockey and up until midget and the worst thing, one of the worst things that you can do is uh, play without a goaltender because it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how well you play. You can try so hard, but you'll, hard, you won't win enough to <laughs> to win a championship or even make the playoffs without a goaltender. It's one of the most frustrating things that can happen. So, anyways, that led me to a realization that more than likely, somewhere down the road here, if they're really going to do a rebuild, people like Kay, Taves and Kane, and I could do Taves sometime down the road here, uh, may get traded. And uh, so I decided to do where, what would happen if Kane got traded to every team in the NHL? Because Kane is an amazing player, which we're looking at right now, as you can see right in front of us. Uh, Kane. Now, here, I first of all, I got some letters. We get letters. Go send your letters. I, we love your letters. We go down to the mailroom. Uh, also, you know, I've got another letter here about from Sven Carlson from Furlan, Sweden, saying that he hasn't got his Pearls of Wisdom necklace yet, and he has subscribed to my channel. Yes, um, we had some border issues, Sven, going into Sweden, uh, so it's going to take a little longer than I thought, but thanks for your letter. Uh, but we'll get there. Melissa's on it. She'll be there. I'll get. I'll probably get a, uh, a message from her today telling me how things are going there in Sweden. So, thanks for your letter. Uh, Choi Ling from Koping, China asked, you know, why would Chicago the Blackhawks trade Kane? And uh, great question. Well, if you're if a team is rebuilding, having somebody like Kane is prob is not. I mean, they may not. Kane's got three million dollars left on his contract. Let's look at Kane's contract here. See, it says. 2021, three million at ten and a half. Is that rich? Yeah, that's rich. Um, they may have to retain some of that. We've gone through that with our previous teams, the possibilities of retaining some salary, um, and maybe not, depending on how a team may, may want it. But it's only for three more years. Now it's possible they hold on to him. He's 30, going to be 32, I believe, this year, until he's 35, and think that this is going to be a quick rebuild, and it'd be good to have Kane there at 35 years old. I don't think that that may be the best idea, depending on what package you can get back for him. Now, let's remember that Kane does have a no movement clause in his contract, so that could muddle things. That'll muddle things up a little bit as far as their return. Uh, he'd have to agree to wherever he was going if he decided to go. Uh, and Gary Miller from Canyonville, Idaho, he calls and says, Did you think that my Columbus Blue Jackets could pick up 
somebody like Kane. Well, we're, we're, that's going to be one of the teams because we're going into in reverse alphabetical order here. Uh, because we're doing a series right now in alphabetical order on every team and their moves and free agency and stuff like that. Uh, I think we're on, we're going to be doing, I'm going to be doing Colorado today with uh, John from Off the Wall Hockey, one of the finest in the land right there. We've also been doing uh, one with Ron from SteelFlyers.com, uh, which I'm part of, www.SteelFlyers.com, uh, for the Dallas Stars. And I've did a couple by myself. And then, of course, Joe Borick, the finest in the land there, uh, writer for um, Flyers Nitty Gritty and uh, um, several other things as well. I always forget his whole list that he has. And he also has Sports Fanatic News Podcaster. So, and I've got some more exciting news. We're going to be doing another young fellow who's going to be coming in and doing the Edmonton Oilers with us as well here pretty quick. But let's get into this, shall we? We'll get into your Columbus Blue Jackets there, Gary Miller. But we're going to start with the LA Kings. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this. And there's two teams in this, you know, of the 31 teams that I did, that I didn't even bother doing, but this wasn't one of them, but the next one probably, or soon will be. Uh, so uh, you're going to notice that I didn't do Detroit, and that's simply because the more I looked at there's just no way he'd be going to Detroit. There's no way he's going to wave for Detroit. I don't think Detroit would be interested for a player that age in their, in their play, where they are in their rebuild. It just absolutely, and they don't even really have anything that they can give up. So it doesn't make any sense. L.A. was almost on that doesn't make sense list. But um, I, I, I kept them in basically because they did so well last year. Uh, they were one of the best teams in the league at the end before COVID hit. And um, they do crazy things. They do things sometimes where you just go, where you wonder, you know, Maybe, like, why why would they do something like that? Like, they do moves. They think outside of the box is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's possible. The only way they could do it, though, they have the cap space, I believe. Let's let's look at their cap space, shall we? They have 13 million, yeah, projected cap space. They would have the cap space for something like this. Uh, they wouldn't even have to send anything back. If they decided to take Kane now, what? Why would they take Kane? They're sort of in a rebuild, right? That's what everybody's going to say. They're sort of in a rebuild, and I don't agree or disagree with you. Um, the reason why is I get the impression that they think they're going to be a contender in three years. When you consider you have Gabriel Velarde, who is an Already, like last year, I, I think he's going to take on the world this year, really. Watch out for this kid, Gabriel Velarde. This year, um, I think he's going to be putting up some huge, sick numbers. You still have Andre Kopitar, who's only 33 years old. I mean, I don't know if they want to screw around with Andre Kopitar's window too much here. Uh, and you've got some good, great prospects like Alex Turcott and, and uh, Jarrett Dolan Anderson, who... Um, they are extremely high on to be an effective player this year. He's coming out of uh, the, um, the AHL, had 28 points last year as a 21-year-old. Not too shabby. He's going to be bigger, stronger, and ready to go this year. Um, and, uh, you know, Adrian Kempe, Dustin Brown's not getting any younger. It's possible. It's possible. They've also got a lot of prospects. Rasmus Pukari coming up. Of course, their uh, last draft pick, their big, huge stud of a freaking center, Quentin Byfield. Is he going to be ready next year? Probably, if not next year, the year after. And you're starting to see a lineup here that doesn't look too shabby. Uh, and if you notice something here, there isn't much for wingers on this team. And they're really, when you look at their, uh, who's coming up, they've got a couple wingers, but nothing that really blows your mind. Now, Velarde can play the wing. Byfield can go in there. And, uh, but as far as other wingers are concerned, these guys might work out. Or oh, Arthur Kaliev. Arthur Kaliev, what's happened with that dude? He 
did not has not put up very good numbers. Uh, oh wait, sorry, that, I got the wrong guy. OHL it, uh, in the last year in the OHL, wrong guy. He could very well be somebody that plays very quick, very soon. I was thinking of the center that they are uh, that they have uh, drafted second or overall in 2019. He could play. So Kalia, if you put Kalia in here, he can play. If they believe he can play. If um, Velarde, uh, Byfield, um, this lineup is Turcotte. This lineup is young and looking strong really quick. Defense is a bit of an issue. So what would they have to give up? I think you'd have to give up I follow. I think you'd have to, they'd have to, uh, they'd have to give up one of these young guys we're talking about, like maybe Arthur's Kaliev, uh, <coughs> or, um, uh, Dolan, Dolan Anderson, your first round draft pick next year. That would be huge if they gave up their first round draft pick next year. Chicago would be all over that. <clears throat> Do I think this is likely? Not exactly. But I don't think it's too terribly crazy. You could have Kopitar playing on and Dustin Brown move down here. So you've got a better second line center, second line. Velarde could go over here and Byfield could play the middle. Now all of a sudden you have you'd have to find a left winger to play. Adrian Kempe would move up here. Trevor Moore would move up here. Um, it's not the perfect spot. Tyler Madden, by the way, what should could be ready. That was a nice trade to pick up Tyler Madden. Rasmus Kupari was the guy I was talking about that didn't put up the numbers. Excuse me, not Kaliev. Rasmus Kupari. They can offer Rasmus Kupari, who looks like he's going to take a little while longer yet as well. So they have a lot of things that they could do for that. Now, um, plus they got, I just remembered that, they've got Akil Thomas, and they just picked up Elias Anderson, who struggled in the Rangers, and Carl Grundstrom, who they got from Toronto. Yeah, all of these guys are going to be playing very soon. And this team is going to get strong, I think, pretty quick. You put a guy with a cup like Kane up there in two, three years in his contract, you never know. This team could be very quickly become a contender. Really could. So I, it doesn't look on the surface that it would be likely, but I wouldn't put it past LA to do something like that. So I kept them in. Uh, the Florida Panthers is next. And uh, would the Florida Panthers like a Kane? I would imagine they would love a Kane. There's a few problems with uh, this, though. Now, this is all depends on how you look at it. And this is where I question ownership sometimes. They removed Hoffman and they removed Dadunov because they said that they're going to uh, cut some salary. Now, that can mean a lot of things. Um, removing salary could just mean that they don't think these players are worth how much they're getting paid. It doesn't necessarily... It means... It doesn't necessarily mean that they need to go on $10 million under the cap. It just means that their assets better draw fannies into the seats so they can make money. Everything is about the value of what of the player that you have. And uh, Kane brings a huge value to any team. By the way, um, far as LA, they would have to convince them that they're a contender for the, for in the right away. Same as in Florida, if Kane were to even consider this idea. It would be difficult to think that Kane would make a move to go to Florida since they haven't been all that successful in their career. But if, uh, if they still had their previous general manager, it possibly could have been more likely in Talon because he was in Chicago. And, uh, you know, that might, they could call up Talon and say, hey, can you convince Kane to come over here? This is a little far-fetched that he would go here for several reasons. What would they give in return? Um, almost certainly Florida is tight as far as money is concerned. Um, now, if they want to just go for it, if they think Kane's going to bring fannies into the seats, and by the way, I believe he will, uh, then they could definitely... Uh, oh, by the way, there was a question. Did I talk about this with Chicago? I'll go back here for a second. If you're worried about his age, Patrick Kane had 84 points in 70 games last year, and the year before had 110 and 81. 
I don't think he's slowing down anytime soon. That was another thing, Gary Miller, when he asked, he, he wrote, he asked, you know, why would they want Kane because he's so old? He's actually getting better with age. I wanted to bring that up. I think, to tell you the honest truth, I think if I'm Florida, I'd strongly consider this if I can find a package to get him. He will put people in the seats. If, if you can't go to a game when Kane is on the ice, it's time to move on. I'm serious. The guy is an incredible player. His passing, his slickness, his intelligence on the ice. He makes moves that you go like, how did he know that was going to happen? He's almost Wayne Gretzky-ish in that sense. So, yeah, what would they give up? They'd have to give up a pretty, like Frank Vitrano is only 26. I, I think he's got a lot more in him, that Frank Vitrano. I think he can score a lot more than what he has shown. Uh, something like Frank Vitrano, but they'd have to give up a, probably a defenseman here, like Mackenzie Weger. Uh, their first round draft pick next year for sure would be gone, and that would be the biggest thing. The only reason why Chicago would really do something like this, if they had other options, because it depends on who Kane puts on his list for a no trade clause, they would, could think that Florida still will miss the playoffs, and this becomes extremely valuable next year. So that, Vitrano and uh, maybe Mackenzie Weger, who they have to sign as a restricted free agent. Chicago needs defensemen pretty bad. And a guy like Owen Tippett. Something like that might do it. Owen Tippett would be a pretty big, uh, you know, was a first was a first round pick at one time. Has been putting some pretty good numbers up in the AHL. Something like that would do it. And to tell you the honest truth, if I'm Florida, I may do something like that. Look at what that lineup would look like with Kane in it. Hornquist can get down here for sure. You need him to be down here. You don't want him to be up here. Hornquist is not a first-line right winger at this stage of his career. You could put Kane with Barkoff and Huberto and have one of maybe the top three or four first lines in the league. If that doesn't draw fannies into the seats, boys and girls, then... Uh, I don't think they should. I don't think Florida should be there. To tell you the honest truth, uh, the Edmonton Oilers, quickly over here. Would they love Kane? Absolutely. Do they have cap space? Absolutely not. But you could go Zach Cassian, Darnell Nurse, and uh, one of their one of their prospects. Possibly, uh, you, you might have to bite the bullet on Evan Bouchard. That would be sick. It would be something that would make you sick to your stomach to give up Evan Bouchard with all the problems they've had with defense, but uh, especially after giving up Darnell Nurse. Maybe that's too much for defense. Uh, it's going to cost you something huge. And I, on, in all honesty, it's difficult to see a, something that could be done here besides giving up Kaylor Yamamoto, really. I think it would almost have to be Kaylor Yamamoto going here. Because, first of all, I mean, it would have to be Kaylor Yamamoto, somebody like maybe Adam Larson in a first-round pick. And I know the Oilers fans are going to be like, why are we going to take an old guy like this? We're sort of rebuilding. We love Kaylor. I love Kaylor. But seriously... And and that and that would they still have to find way would find up to find ways to get cap space, um, maybe ask see if they can cover two million of the eight million, uh, you know then you're only going four million over the cap, and you have to scramble to try to find a way to get some rid of some guys to do it. It doesn't make much sense. It really doesn't. But it makes the only reason why it makes sense is if, if you throw Kane with McDavid and uh, uh, Dreisaitl on the power play, like you pretty much, your power play percentage is going to be like 60%. But I'm not going to go too far into that anymore because it's uh, not, it's so not likely that that's going to happen. But I thought I would throw it in there just, just to say, just to imagine Kane with McDavid and Nugent Hopkins or, uh, whoever else you want to put on that left side, Dreisaitl on the power play. My gosh, that would be disgusting. Dallas Stars, I'll quickly go over this one. Uh, yeah, would they they be calling? Absolutely. But if I'm Chicago, the first name's coming up is Guriano. 
uh, Gary Anoff, I mean, and I'm wanting like an Essa Lindell or something like that. And it's possible. You, you could always say, no, we're not giving you Lindell. We'll give you Klingberg and uh, Radic Foxa, who they just signed for eternity and he has a no movement clause. Um, if you look at all the other teams, though, that are going to offer something up here, it doesn't look like, even if there was many teams on his no-trade clause, it doesn't look like Dallas has a chance. So I just thought I'd skip over. I know they'd be calling. The Columbus Blue Jackets, I'll save this to the end. Columbus Blue Jackets have cap space. They have, they, they traded Murray, they traded Nudavara, um, and they freed up cap space for something. Were they doing it just because... It's COVID and they lost some money and they're a small market team. It's possible. It's possible. But I've heard so many rumors of them in on Lion A and a whole bunch of other guys. I can tell you right now, if it got across to Tortorella that they were thinking about Kane, he would be going running up to that office in a freaking second. Yes, yes, yes. We want Kane. We definitely want Kane. The guy who's won Stanley Cups and uh, that oh, Tortorella would be losing his mind. And I'll tell you, he'd be like, yeah, trade Oliver Bjorkstrand. All, all, not that Oliver Bjorkstrand is bad. He's a good 25, possibly 30 goal scorer. He'd be saying, trade whatever you have to, pretty much. Uh, here's something that Chicago, we mentioned, Chicago doesn't have any goaltending. They traded their goaltending away, have left them with nothing, basically. How about Elvis Mers Lickens? who's a young goaltender that would fit in that system, would give him a goaltender for now and a goaltender for the future. And, um, like I said, and then uh, somebody like Alexander Tessier. That may do it. Bjorkstrand, Tessier, and Alvis Merzlikens, if he's willing to go to Columbus, I think out of all the teams we just talked about here, this one would probably be the most likely. The Columbus Blue Jackets getting Kane. Throw Kane in here on the right side with uh, Dubois and Foudy instead of Bjorkstrand. That is now a complete number one line. And you've got a second line on Foudy or Foudy. Foudy? Is it Foudy? Anyways, Liam Foudy. Love him. Looked great in the playoffs. Looks like he's going to be a gamer. Uh, you, Nick Foligno with... Or you could put Nyquist with Domi and Atkinson. Now you've got a solid second line. On a lot of teams, that would be somebody's first line. And you've got some scoring in your lineup. And you know that the Columbus Blue Jackets had a difficult time scoring last year. In the playoffs, that was their biggest problem. Well, if you add Kane, he's going to bring feet, seats to the fannies to the seats. He's going to bring scoring. He's going to bring playoff success. He's a superstar. And um, I think Columbus, to me, out of all the teams we've done so far, actually, I don't know if they were number one, but they would be in the top three for a team that would be available, ready, and willing to pick up a guy like this. Well, that's my full 42%, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Thank you for your subscriptions and uh, hitting the bell and all of those things like that. I'm going to head off now and go talk to my friend John from Off the Wall Hockey. We're going to do some Colorado Avalanche free agency and future talk. Have a great day, everybody. Oh, my God. Lots of love to you.